I oversee the logging from about uh, uh, Raymond up to uh, Lake Finald, up about that far. This is Kevin Peelmom. He is our sales and marketing manager. He sells all the logs for us. I'm in charge of the marketing pretty much on the Olympic Peninsula from Forks to Port Angeles to Olympia to Centralia, down into Raymond. Um, we do about 12. 12 and a half to 13 million feet of logs a month. Um, so I kind of travel around and sell everything that we're producing. Uh, my background, I kind of got into the, the field as an engineer back in 2003 and kind of shifted into marketing about three years ago. Uh, kind of give you guys an idea of the different job opportunities that are available in the industry. You can kind of start in one area and kind of proceed a different direction as your, your career develops. So. This is Roger Smith. He's one of our core loggers that we have here in the harbor. We usually run about two to three of his sides pretty much year round. This is all his equipment. I'll let Roger... <laughs> uh, we're always looking for uh, young people to take the seats and positions that we have. A lot of people are retiring. I mean, it's amazing. The crew we have, my wife Carmen, she's my business partner. Uh, but anyway, the. The crew we have, there's probably uh, half of them are going to retire in the next 10 years, and a lot of them just in the last next five years. So, we're actively recruiting young people all the time. We have a 19-year-old kid that's not on this job site, but he uh, actually started with us last year, right when he graduated. We have a 20-year-old kid. We have a lot of young kids that you know we see. We look for people like you guys, so um, women, men, everything. So. Yeah. Uh, but uh, we're always actively looking and uh, so. I'm Curtis. I'm the uh, machinery salesman for Triad Machinery. We sell Roger 90% of all the machines he uses out here. It, we'll go over that. Kevin touched on it briefly about the start of his career and the different job opportunities that are there. You have a wide gamut from four to six years of college education to maybe a trade school or coming out and learning on the ground how things are done. Or you um, have zero college. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it's zero. That's what I mean, coming out, yeah. starting on the ground. It's uh, a very, very open industry. Uh, I started out with a forestry degree, started cruising timber, laying out timber sales, and then I log scaled for a while, and then I got a GIS degree, and I did computer GIS work um, for companies for about five years, and ended up back out here, where I like it the most. So it is a very, very wide array of opportunities that exist out here uh, in all facets of it. Probably at least half my time yeah. is on the computer and doing things there. Uh, that has not gone away, the paperwork yeah. into things, contracts and this and that. I'd much rather be out with the crew every day seeing how things are going, what they're running into. Um, part of keeping things safe is being out here and seeing what these guys are encountering on the ground making sure there wasn't a knob over the side of the hill that we didn't account for that they're having to go around or go over the top of uh danger trees and on the road coming or going uh and just they're out here on it every single day they're going to pick things up that i'm not going to pick up because i'm not out here i'm not covering the ground as much as they are and uh that interaction talking with them is is huge to us keeping things the way we want them keeping them safe particular job but this is what I give to Roger 
that tells him what to do with these once he gets so them up here. We're merchandising the logs here, but we, we bring them up to a pile and then there's gonna be a processor down here we'll watch, but he processed this up this morning. But as you can see, he's very well in tune on what we're doing. So he's got probably got about 12 sorts here. He's doing each diameter, each length, species, grade, because you can see these little ones right here. What do they do with that? Chips. Well, well, Chips, like over my question. yard? Does anybody have any idea what this sort would be? <laughs> That's the scraps. So what, what do you think they make out of those scraps? Cardboard. Toilet paper. <laughs> paper. So yeah. this, this is our fur pulp sort. And this, this goes to, you know, like a Melek Cosmo in, in Cosmopolis. They, this goes to Willis or local that chips it up into small wood chips. They transport it over to Cosmo to a pulp mill. And that's where you're getting your paper, your your cardboard. Uh, pulp is actually used for an amazing amount of things. Your screens on your iPhones have a component of a wood product in it. Uh, toothbrush handles. Uh, you, you'd be surprised what pulp is used for uh, across the industry. Clothes. Um, clothes. Flat screen TVs. I mean, you name it. Uh, there's Computer some sort chips. of fiber yep. product in, in almost everything. And we talk about the technology and all of that is costing more and more money for the loggers to invest in it and to be able to use it. But being able to capture the value out of all these different sorts is what makes everything go. We have to have these sorts different diameters. You always check a log on the small end. That's when we talk about the diameter of what the product is. And that's how the board foot is determined. But all these different sorts have different diameters, different amounts of knots, how clean the surface of the log is. And as you see up here, when we get to the processor, these guys are making that decision that quick. They're going through probably 1,800 to 1,000 trees a day, those guys are going through. So you not only have a good eye, you know what you're doing, but that's a job that we talk about some of the jobs you learn, you start out maybe at this position and Roger can go through that. A processor, He's somebody that's been usually doing this for a little while. He knows what he's looking at in the value of the tree when he picks it up and what he can make out of it. Actually, the guy running the processor is my nephew. He started right out of high school with me 24 years ago. So, um, he's, and he's been doing it? Yeah, and he's actually buying part of my company now. So uh, he's uh, actually really, really doing really well. He's got nine employees and... Um, just his, he's the only one on this side, but his other side's uh, helping us out over there too. But no, he's doing really good. And we're looking for people just like him, you know, bring them up and, you know, I have to have a succession plan on certain people too. So good opportunity for a lot of people out there. Yep. So Processor operator is basically the most important role on this landing because that's who determines how much money we make and how much money Roger makes uh, by, by Processing these trees for the maximum value. Um, it, it's a big part of, of what we do, what Scott manages, what Roger manages to make sure we're maximizing the value. It takes 40 years to grow these trees, so we need to maximize our, our profit and when it's time to cut them. Because you're looking at these, this, these piles, what he did this morning is probably, what, $6,000 worth of trees right here that he did. just in a few hours this morning. So. Yeah. And we're looking at a pulp, pulp sort here. Over here we got a chip and saw sort, and down here we got more domestic saw log sorts. Someone mentioned studs when I asked the question. I don't know who, oh, that was you, okay. So studs are usually made out of chip and saw and are domestic saw logs. So chip and saw ranges from five to seven inches. Five inches on the small end, seven inches on the large end. We can run that out longer if or to a, a larger diameter if need be, but we try to stick in that five to seven because it's work less. And then basically we have an eight inch plus sort. So the small end will be eight inches and then you get into quality. Uh, once you get into the eight inch logs, now you have different sorts uh, for quality. Put some clips on it. 
And these logs are really slick, so what my wife's doing up there, she's asking to fall down. They're like ice cubes well, right now. standing on bark. <laughs> okay. Well, good luck. Yeah. It's Take not slipping at all. <laughs> I, I know how that works. I mean, they are like ice cubes right now. Yeah. Yeah, this time of year, the bark really starts slipping off the logs. The sap starts receding out of the bark and you know, holding the bark on the logs, so you run them through the processor. And all the bark just... Slick, slick. Carmen almost did it. It is. No, I do this all the time. Usually yeah. when the guys are out walking around, they have cork boots with little spikes on them. So. Yeah. Which I don't think, does Which, anybody have any on today? We're going to pretend Carl uh, has cork boots on because we're not supposed to be walking on log decks without. Thank you.